Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video. I'm your host, Julien Mika, but you can just call me Julien. So after our last video where we talked about seven champagne myths people believe are true while they actually aren't, today we are going to continue our exploration of the famous champagne wines from France, but we are going to be going a little bit deeper so you understand where the mystical of champagne, its amazing global reputation comes from. So we are going to talk a little bit about the history of champagne as a wine, but also as a region, but we're going to be talking about things that very few people actually know or realize about champagne. Things I'm pretty sure you haven't heard about all that much. After which I will give you some keys to understand why there are so many different types of champagne wines and such variation in price when you go and pick up a bottle at your favorite wine shop. And I will give you some of my favorite personal brands as well. Let's go! So you could literally spend a lifetime learning about champagne, taste the different brands, all the different cuvées, exploring the different vineyard sites and digging into how it's made. It's just so much to know and learn about champagne. I understand it can be a little bit overwhelming, but here I will give you the essential key facts to hopefully get your passion for exploring champagne starting and going. So first you have to know that Champagne is a region in France. It's actually pretty close to Paris, about a short hour drive east of Paris. Most people don't realize that it's this close to Paris. And that's probably because my fellow wine common tasters don't talk about it enough. But this location near the capital of France has had an enormous importance for the success of Champagne as a wine. Did you know that virtually all kings of France were crowned in the city of Reims, so the capital city of the region of Champagne, since, and that's since the baptism of Clovis, the king of the Franks, in 498. So that's a little while back. Heather, since 1027, year 1027, only two kings were not crowned in Champagne. So naturally, Champagne has always been the wine of French kings and emperors subsequently, even before it was actually made a sparkling wine. And we're talking from Charlemagne, the great emperor of France, to Napoleon, emperor as well, but in more modern days. And that's also because it was easy and close by to get the wine shipped from Champagne to Paris, where most kings lived. Tom Perignon, a Benedictine monk who lived in Champagne, is credited for inventing the method for making wine sparkle, the bubbles. You probably have heard about Tom Perignon. It seems he may have actually studied the process while he was touring other regions around France and then brought this method to his native Champagne. Nonetheless, no one argues that he, Dom Perignon, perfected the winemaking method that allows to mix Champagne and that it's with him that Champagne wines really started to sparkle and more importantly taste good and that's in the late 17th century. Coincidentally, that's exactly right under the reign of Louis XIV, the exuberant French king who built the palace of Versailles that we know today and who loved champagne wine as well. So champagne wine has always had the favor, the endorsement, the free promotion as well of the French and the whole of the European elite from the UK to Russia. No wonder it still has such a reputation to this day. There's such a history there. That's it, the region of Champagne and its location near Paris proved to be a curse during history as well, particularly during World War II. After which the entire region was virtually brought down to ashes and people of Champagne have had to rebuild it all since. So it hasn't always been bright and shiny for the people of Champagne. But let's leave history aside for now and move on to the next topic. go briefly over how champagne is made, I don't want to bother you with too much technicalities, but the main thing you need to understand is that the bubbles come from the re-fermentation inside the bottle of champagne you buy it in. So this wine has been fermented inside this very, very bottle. They take a still wine and then add a few grams of sugar to each and every bottle with some yeast. The magic of fermentation happens and bubbles are formed from the CO2 generated inside the bo bottle and that's how they build the pressure inside the bottle. And this is actually quite an expensive process to run compared to fermentation in a tank. It's quite complicated as well to master this process as well to craft super fine elegant sparkling wines this way. Essentially champagne wines are blends and not only blends of different grapes which 
where blends generally are, but also blends from different vineyards, many different vineyard locations from different areas that are sometimes quite far apart from each other because the region of Champagne is fairly large. And there are also blends from different years, different vintages. One bottle of Champagne like this one is not one single year, it's a blend. All of this blending has two goals, consistency, so the wine tastes pretty much the same every time you buy it, and also approaching the perfect or nearing the perfect balance to a wine, the perfect harmony of a blend. And not many winemakers around the world can afford such a complex winemaking process. This is one of the secrets of Champagne's dominance in the world when it comes to sparkling wine quality. But let's have a look at the different types of champagnes that you can buy so you can understand them a little bit better. You may have found yourself at a wine shop and wondering why there is so many different champagnes you can choose from, which one you should buy and why there is such an important difference in price. So to understand champagne you mainly need to understand the concept of blending that we talked briefly about before. The idea behind this is to make a refined wine that tastes subtle, elegant and balanced. You need to combine different components that all taste a little bit different. Somewhat like a chef needs to balance out his sauce when he adds different components the acidity, the salt with sauce to find the perfect taste. So champagne wines are assembled from different vineyards with different sauce, but also generally wines from different vintages, as we talked about before. The younger wines bring some freshness and zinc, some fruitiness, while the older wines add depth and complexity to the blend, many, many layers of complexity, and that's what you feel, especially on the finish while you're tasting a champagne wine. Much like it's done with many spirits like the cognacs and the whiskies. They blend together different wines from different ages and so on. So most champagnes do not have a year on the label. As you can see, those wines do not have a year on the labels. Those are the types of wines that are called non-vintage champagne. That's the very first type, the most common type. Then you will have what are called vintage champagnes, wines, champagnes that do bear the mention of the year on the label. I hope you can see this here, but vintage champagnes do bear the year of the vintage, the year of the harvest. Now, to make a wine taste as good as a champagne O2 using wines from one single year, not blending different years, it needs, it requires an absolute selection of the very best grapes of the very best terroirs. This is why vintage champagnes are more expensive and rarer than non-vintage champagne wines because they really have to make an absolute perfect selection. So that's vintage champagne. The third type of champagne, well, is simply Rosé, uh, Rosé Champagne, which are uh, white wines to which they add a little bit of red wine or pinkish wine to make a white wine uh, turn pink and make the beautiful color that we love in Champagne Rosé. Those are essentially the three types of Champagne wines. It's down to this, it's pretty simple, right? Just remember that, to put things simply, the price of a Champagne is a factor of how good the vineyards it was made from, Ah, and there is a very detailed classification of champagne terroirs and also of how old the wines that were used in the blend are because the older the wines the more expensive they are. So within these three categories you will have what are called the prestige cuvées, those very luxury, luxurious champagnes that are made with the most precise and dedicated winemaking craftsmanship and using grapes from absolute best terroirs. Famous prestige cuvées include obviously the Dom Perignon that is made by Moet and Chandon, the most famous of all champagne houses, but you'll have Crystal by Louis Roderer or Belle Epoque by Perrier Jouet. So some of my personal favorite brands of champagne are certainly, well, the Perrier Jouet champagnes, which you've seen me tasting during those videos. I enjoy how Perrier Jouet uh, champagne wines can be very, very playful. I enjoy how precise the fruitiness and the floral expressions are, also how acidic, but always very playful. Some wines, some champagnes can be a little austere. With the Perrier Jouet champagnes, it's 
generally not the case and that's why I appreciate them. I also love the wines made by the Moutard family, extremely friendly people that craft stunning champagne wines with a lot of personality in the south of the Champagne region and they're a bit away from the more glamorous north, the Epernay and the Reims area north of the Champagne region but to compensate from this less reputable area well they compensate with a lot injecting a lot of passion into their wine and I love their wines as well. Finally I also love the wines that are made by the Palmer Champagne House as well as the champagne wines made by the Maison Mam. And I'll leave it here for today. This was it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video, these videos about champagne wines. If you like learning about champagne, make sure to check out the seven champagne myths you should stop believing in. That's if you haven't watched it already. I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. I will see you next week with our next video. Au revoir. Bye bye.